So I recently came into possession of this 1989 Johnson 25 horsepower. Um, a friend of mine, his father passed away, and he had this in his garage, and he bought it brand new, and he had never put it in the water, so it had just been sitting in his garage, and as you can see, it still has the sticker on the prop. There is some scuff marks, but it's mainly in just places where it's been laying down uh, for a while. Um, still has the tested sticker on it. Everything looks to be in really good condition. Um, and he wanted me to fix it up and sell it for him. It may be going to a guy in Guyana who does mission work and they do a lot of traveling by boat. So we may, once we get it all fixed up, pack it up and ship it to Guyana. But I was just going to do a few videos on how to do maintenance on these things and uh, and like such as rebuilding the carburetor and changing out the water pump. I did notice it, it did crank, believe it or not. Um, it cranked up pretty easily and but it did not pump water so I'm pretty sure the water pump needs to be replaced. It may be dry rotted or whatnot, but we're gonna take the lower unit off and change out the water pump and go from there. So I'm gonna be following the procedures in this sea lock manual for the 1973 to 89 uh, Johnson Evinrude motors. You can get these manuals on uh, Amazon and I highly recommend it. Um, also, I do have a website, thisoldoutboard.com. It'll be linked in the video description. You can go there and I'm going to post a link where I, I put the steps in my own words um, for this uh, water pump replacement. So make sure to check out the video description uh, for the step-by-step -step instructions. You're going to start by removing the water inlet screens. There are two screens, one on this side and another one on the other side. This just takes a Phillips head screwdriver, remove four screws total to move the water inlet screens. You have to remove both of them because as you can see here, they made up with each other. This screw goes into there, there, and vice versa on this side. So you can't take one side off, pull it off, and then take the other side. Take both of them off and they should fall apart. With the screens removed, you expose the shift rod coupling. With two half inch wrenches, you need to back the top nut off You can tell that I don't think this has ever been done before by the color and the paint being stripped away. So this motor has very few hours on it, if any. The manual shows the upper shift nut being able to slide far up the shaft here, as you can see here. Here's the plastic keeper underneath the top nut. And as you can see from the paint job here, it's not allowing this to easily slide up at all. It is separated because you can see the relative motion. The remaining things that are holding the lower unit to the exhaust housing here are this forward nut. We have to remove that. And then these two bolts on this side. And then there's two mirrored on the other side. So in order to remove the lower unit, we're going to have to remove this black plastic keeper and this black or this uh, upper nut. So those two things have to be removed. Inside or the, the black plastic keeper has a slit in it. So we're going to um, kind of insert a work knife or sorts in there and try to pry this black plastic piece off 
and then hopefully we can shit or slide the top nut down and off. Maybe a screwdriver will help you be a little more brave to to get in there and get it off. It's helping me. shot out I don't know if you can see that very well but there's the slit that's in there just be careful not to tear it so as you can see mine nut is not wanting to come slide off very easily all right once you have the forward nut sliding free there are five bolts holding the lower unit on. The forward or the front nut, which I already have removed here, and its washer. And then there are one, two, three, and four bolts there. And you'll need to remove those. And the lower unit should slide on out once you remove that one. So the forward nut is a half inch wrench and these four are 7 sixteenths. So there's the last one and let's watch this and yep that slid right on out and here's the lower unit. So you'll notice the copper water tube is missing and that's because I got a bond, got in a bond in an earlier step. and. Um, I had to remove it already, so it's on the bench. I had to reassemble it to show you the the right process. So it's it was in there. Um, I just screwed up. So that's how you remove the lower unit. You should have your water tube pipe either still stuck in on the upper side, and you'll have the copper tube here, or it'll slip out from up there, and it'll still be attached right there. So. That's it, that's how you remove the lower unit. Now we're gonna open this up and check out the water pump. 